The word world is tossed around rather frivolously in sports, as in, well, as in World Series, which is really, of course, the American series. Not so in soccer. It's truly a worldwide sport. It's reported by Richard Gisbert of ABC News. It really is the simplest of games. Take some kids most anywhere in the world, give them a ball and a patch of dirt, and you have a soccer game. It can be in Zambia, in the snow in Romania, a welcome distraction from the troubles in Northern Ireland, or a way out of the shanty towns of South Africa. When it's played at this level, it is a simple game. But when it gets to the World Cup, with the whole world watching, it gets complicated. It gets political, and occasionally, it gets dangerous. Dangerous for people like Colombian Andres Escobar, who paid for the goal he scored on his own net with his life. The World Cup has actually been blamed for starting wars. The seeds of the 1982 Falklands War between Britain and Argentina may have been planted at the 1978 tournament. In 78, Argentina staged the World Cup, and at the time, it was a regime of the military generals. And the generals stopped spending money on boring things like roads and hospitals and schools, and they spent all the money on the World Cup. And so Argentina won the World Cup. Everyone was in the street shouting, Argentina, Argentina, and the generals were very happy. They thought they safeguarded their popularity. Four years later, when Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands, it was seen as another attempt by the junta to bolster its position. The first soccer war was in 1969. Thousands died when El Salvador and Honduras went to war for a week after this World Cup qualifying match. Soccer can also be a symbol of peace. In March, a game was staged in Sarajevo between the locals and peacekeepers. The idea was to convince Bosnians that under the new ceasefire, it was safe to gather within a few hundred yards of enemy lines. Today, Bosnians say that game was a psychological turning point for a city under siege. For this city and for my friends, that's hope. Hope for life, you know, because we think that that game gives us moral, you know, that Sarajevo will be like it used to be, you know, and everything will be just fine. But the war goes on, and in central Bosnia this week, when government soldiers weren't training their guns on Serbian targets, they were kicking a ball around. The World Cup affects the war of nerves between the U.S. and Haiti. When Haitians watch the games on TV, their government flashes anti-American messages. Some believe Haitians have been so preoccupied, they won't even notice the full impact of economic sanctions until after the final on July 17th. When they will wake up on July 18th, then uh, they will realize that for a month they have been in, in you know, Poliana world, and they will wake up in hell. With the people distracted, the World Cup can be politically useful. This Nigerian opposition leader won last year's elections, but the military government waited until Nigerians were celebrating a World Cup win to arrest him for treason. The poorer the country, the greater the emotional investment in the tournament, the greater the likelihood for some kind of political intervention. Take Cameroon, I think that's maybe the best example where the president actually picked Roger Miller at 42 years old to play in the team against the wishes of the coach, purely in order that Miller would score goals and then the president would become more popular, he thought. And in fact, it worked. Miller scored a goal. He was one of the best Cameroonians in the tournament. So maybe the president has a better view of things than the coach. In Italy, where World Cup broadcasts are hosted by leggy blondes, sport mixes with sex and politics. When running for prime minister, media tycoon and soccer team owner Silvio Berlusconi needed a catchy slogan. He borrowed the rallying cry of the national soccer team. Forza Italia, the political party, was born, and after one election, is undefeated. On the economic side, Brazilians are so focused on their team, everything shuts down. The estimated loss of worker productivity here during the tournament, $3 billion. Some people need the break more than others. Reports from crime-infested Moscow are that crime rates have dropped by 70% during the tournament. Mostly, though, this World Cup will be remembered for the joy it has brought to fans around the world. But as long as the sport moves people to wave flags, those people had better get used to politicians getting involved. But is it that sad? Because um, 
If it were just 11 guys in shirts running around and kicking a ball at each other, who would care? It's because it matters that it matters. And for the more than 2 billion people who will watch the final, no sports event matters like the World Cup. Richard Gisbert, ABC News, London. Well, the celebrations are going on right now in Italy and Brazil because they won today's games. More tomorrow at 3.30. For Desmond Armstrong and Alexi Lalas, I'm Jim McKay saying so long.